The world has come to an end. The whole sky was painted in red and blue tones. Thunder rumbled everywhere and numerous lightning flashed, cutting through the firmament. The guy who was watching all this was standing on the street and trying to call his parents. But on the other end of the line he only heard that the number he had dialed was outside the network coverage area. From what he heard, he was instantly scared and his eyes grew much larger. The next second, he was hugging his younger sister and trying to calm her down. The guy shouted at her to be patient, and at this time he would look for healing restorative water and save her. Taking the girl in his arms, he ran into the house to his girlfriend, worried about what had happened. But there he caught her kissing her lover, who turned out to be a friend of the main character. After that, the man, saying that he would rip open the guy's belly, plunged the sword into the main character's stomach. Thick scarlet blood splashed everywhere. The guy thought that it would be good if he could start all over again. The main character thought that he would like to have more powerful equipment in order to be able to fight with opponents. He would also like to have a unique power that would help him defeat his enemies and then they would all tremble before him. Jumping up on the bed, the guy looks at the time and realizes that there are exactly three hours left before the beginning of the end of the world. Not believing what was happening, the guy pinched his cheek painfully and made sure that he was not asleep. Apparently, young Fan really managed to be reborn. Glancing at the other side of the bed, the guy discovered that his girlfriend Yoon Jong was sleeping sweetly next to him. He looked at her and thought about what he should do, kill her or thank her. The guy thought that if his girlfriend and lover Zio Ao had not agreed to kill the guy and his younger sister Jin Zhu, then the main character would not have been able to be reborn and get a second chance to correct his mistakes. Looking at his fist, the guy discovered that the gold ring was still with him. Yang Fan decided that in this life he should take good care of his loved ones and the most important thing is to take revenge on the offenders. The thought of the latter froze the blood in the guy's veins and there was a strong desire to act. He swore that he would get to all his enemies to take revenge on them. Suddenly, there was a loud knock. The door to the room opened abruptly. A man kicked her and shouted that he needed to make a room tour. Two big men with bats entered the room. They looked at the guy and the girl and said that these two bastards were in place, as expected, heading to the bed. One of the men said that he loved Yoon Jong very much, and she did not want to pay attention to him at all. After looking at the guy on the bed, the man with the bat clarified whether he was the girl's boyfriend and said that now he and his friend would break all three of his legs, hinting at the guy's reproductive organ. The girl jumped out of bed and turned to Fan with the words that she was scared and did not know who these people were. The guy at that moment thought that his girlfriend was playing the innocent very badly, calling her a bitch, and was surprised that he hadn't noticed this before. One of the guys raised a bat and called Yong Fan a brat asked him how he dares to take away the girls he likes from him. The man struck with a bat, but missed and hit the bed. Yang Fan managed to dodge in time and said that the guy was moving too slowly. The main character stood up and told the guy with the bat that there would be a saying at the end of the world, which says that the end of the world is the world of the strongest. With these words, he grabbed the guy with the bat by the head and threw him into the wall with such great force that there were dents and cracks in it, and the second man with the bat backed away in fear. Yoon Jong looked at her boyfriend and was surprised at how cool he had become. At that moment, the guy turned to the second offender and announced to him that he was next in line for a fight. The man was scared and did not have time to do anything, as Yang Fan hit him in the face with all his might. Beating the offender, Yang Fan shouted that today, when the time of the new world comes, these two will beat the guy. The zombies will almost bite Fan to death and he will miss the first opportunity to gain strength and now he is knocking out debts from these thugs. Finally, the guy ordered the enemy to remove his wounded carcass and get a good feel for how cruel the new world is. Fan was already turning towards the door to leave the room, when suddenly his girlfriend called out to her boyfriend and asked him where he went. The girl started to say something, but the guy interrupted her, saying that he was sick of the girl and their relationship was over. Yang Fan grabbed a tea, shirt, pulled it on and said that the next time they saw each other, it would be the day of the girl's death. With these words, the guy left the room. The girl looked at the guy and could not understand what nonsense he was talking, because they had only recently started dating, and he was already breaking up with her. At this time, young Fan had already gone outside and suddenly realized that the sky had darkened and the seeds of darkness were falling on the ground. The guy realized with horror that the end of the bill would start earlier. The guy picked up the phone and started calling his younger sister to warn her. The girl was at home at that time. She recently came out of the bathroom and was blow-drying her hair. The girl picked up the phone and answered her brother. She asked him what happened and why he was calling her. The girl jokingly suggested that the guy misses his gorgeous, sweet, beautiful sister and therefore made a call. In response, the guy dryly replied that the girl should listen to him carefully and immediately lock all the doors and windows in the house. He told the girl not to open the door to anyone who would not come and be sure to wait for his arrival. At that moment, the guy looked at the sky and watched as it turned red and blue, and lightning flashed in the sky and thunder rumbled with them. 
The girl was surprised by such an order from her brother and cautiously asked him what had happened. She added that their dorm is safe and there is no need to exaggerate so much. Yang Fan shouted into the phone for the girl to do what he told her quickly, otherwise it would be too late later. Going to the window, the girl saw strange people on the street, who, as it seemed to her, were eating each other. She said this to her brother on the phone, when suddenly the connection was cut off. The guy looked at the phone screen and realized that the signal was gone. He thought that although it was pretty safe in Jin Zhu's dorm this time, he should still hurry up to his sister. Suddenly, the guy felt that his ring was responding, which meant that there was a merchant nearby and the universe was helping Yang Fan. This fact gave the guy courage and strength. The guy followed the vibrations of the ring and came to the right place. It turned out that the energy to which the ring responds turns out to be located in the women's shower on campus. Going into the shower, the guy said that, apparently, women's and men's showers are not much different. Pulling back the curtain, he found a seemingly beautiful girl there. However, when she turned around, her face was covered in blood, her eyes were burning red, and fangs were sticking out of her mouth. The girl screamed at Yang Fan, who in turn noticed that the girl had a good figure, but he would not stand on ceremony even with her. With these words, the guy broke the glass of the fire shield and took out an axe from there. With his help, he took off the girl's head in one motion, shouting that only dead zombies have value. After that, the guy pulled the crystal out of the monster's forehead and said that even the weakest grey crystals should not be scattered, because water sharpens the stone and the guy should gain strength as soon as possible to protect his family. Suddenly, a low-level grey merchant appeared in front of Yang Fan. He was wearing a hooded cloak and a mask covering his face, and there were glowing symbols behind his figure. The guy noticed that in his previous life he discovered the merchant only three months later, and now he met him so quickly. After the end of the world, strange creatures appeared, which people called merchants. From weak to strong, they are divided into nine levels. Gray, white, red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, blue and purple. These creatures could trade with humans, providing various drugs for development and special equipment. Trading started to be initiated and a short call sounded. The guy noted that, as in the previous world, he only needs to approach the merchant with the crystal and the trade is immediately initiated. Yang Fan also found a nice bonus in the form of the fact that the discount was still valid because of the ring. Yang Fan asked if that cool feature of getting high-level items with a low price once a week worked and decided to check it out. He pointed the ring at one of the screens that popped up in front of him and he came across an excellent craftsman's hammer. After the trading session ended, the guy realized that he did not even have enough crystals to buy a development potion at a discount and he needed to raise his level as soon as possible in order to take full advantage of the coming end of the world. Suddenly, Yang Fan heard screams outside the door and opened it to find that there were still people in the shower room who were being attacked by another zombie at that moment. The girls tried to defend themselves as best they could, using improvised means. One of the girls had blue hair in a braid and wore glasses. She was holding a stationary knife in her hands. The second girl had long red hair. She grabbed the knife from her friend's hands and asked to give it to her. After that, she shouted at the zombie that if she came any closer, she would be in trouble. Suddenly, Yang Fan took off the zombie's head with one swing of the axe, coming up to him from behind. The girls were surprised by this turn, because none of them saw that the guy was in the shower. They stated with shock that the guy had killed their classmate. To which Yang replied that it had long been clear from the girl that she had turned into a zombie and ceased to be a person. If the guy had not killed the girl, she would have killed them. The girl with blue hair was surprised to repeat the guy's words that their friend had become a zombie. The second girl quickly realized that the friend who became a zombie wanted to bite them and realized that they were very lucky that the guy appeared. She also thanked Yang Fan for saving them and said her name was Yan Yu and her bespectacled friend was Duanma and asked the name of the guy who saved them. At this time, Duan Mu was still shocked that zombies really existed. At this time, the guy was looking at the girls in a frenzy, because in front of him stood the future best fighters of the Blood Rose base, the skilled marksman Yan Yu and the doctor of animal mutations Duan Mu. Suddenly, the guy's thoughts were interrupted by a loud scream coming from behind. It was another zombie about to attack him. At that moment, Yan Yu threw a knife at the zombie and it fell to the floor. The guy noted that the throw was fast and accurate. Duan Mu screamed that the zombie had stood up again. Yang Fan praised the girl's throw, but said that if she wants to deal with zombies, then even hitting the heart is useless and you need to chop off their heads. With these words, Fan hugged the head of another monster with an axe blade. Ian bent over the zombie to find the crystal. Seeing this, Yan Yu thought that the guy standing in front of her was not just a strongman, but also a pervert, otherwise why was he staring at zombies so intently? The girl also suggested that there might be something wrong with the corpse. At this time, Fan was thinking that last time, the two girls standing in front of him had organized the most capable group called the Blood Rose. Yan Yu became a legendary level 8 shooter, with the ability to hit a target at very long distances. 
Duenmu, in turn, was a level 6 mutation specialist and was able to control mutated plants and animals. Before Yang Fan's rebirth, in the previous world, the Blood Rose girls were feuding with the third base of the heavenly disc in which there was a guy. Jan even remembered how he got into a fight with the girls and could not even think that now they would meet like this. At this moment, Yan Yu interrupted the guy's thoughts. She showed the guy a pebble and asked if that was what he was looking for. Yang raised his head and saw the crystal embryo. He asked the girl where she got it from. The girl, in turn, thought that now she knows what this thing is called. Yan said that her friend Duenmu had an in anatomy and she had just found this fetus herself in the body of a dead zombie. In response, the girl was embarrassed and said that she just wanted to look at the monster a little bit and explore its body. Yan Yu turned to the guy and suggested that he act together, because if there is more than one person in the group, then strength will be added. The guy thought that he had never imagined that the girl organizer of a hostile group in his new life would offer to organize it with her. Yan consulted with her friend Duan, to which she replied that she did not mind and it seemed to her that Yang was a good person, because he had a clear look. The guy thought that if he wants to take revenge on all his abusers, then he definitely needs to organize his own group. Otherwise it will be very difficult to get Xiao Po in the leadership circles of the Heavenly Disc. And these girls have excellent potential in which to invest. Duan said that she and her friend should get dressed, to which she replied that she agreed, because this guy has been seeing them in their underwear for too long. They asked the guy to come out of the locker room so they could change and asked him to wait for them outside and not peek. Jan agreed and said he would see if there were any more zombies outside. The girl asked Fan if he knew how their girlfriends turned into zombies and that they were only in the shower. In response, the guy said that he did not know how the transformation happened, but there were also a lot of dead monsters outside. Yan Yu suggested that the picture outside was probably like in a movie about the end of the world and they should find a safe place and wait for help. In response, Jan said that they would hardly be able to find a safe place in this city because the number of zombies is growing at a terrible pace. So they are also developing. After hearing this, Yan clarified whether humans can evolve in the same way as zombies. In response, the guy said that they should talk outside, because it seemed to be clean outside. On the street, the guy stood in front of the girls and told them his name. He said he could help them develop and become as cool as himself, but he had three conditions. The first condition was that in any of their actions, the girls should obey Yang's orders. The second condition was that the guy did not need a burden, so the girls would follow him, give all the crystal embryos. The third rule was simple and short, traitors will be killed. And you, as always, asked her friend for advice, to which she replied that it was clear from non-verbal gestures that Yang was telling the truth and he had probably already developed, otherwise he would not be so strong. Yan Yu thought about her friend's words. She approached Fan and said that they agreed to the guy's terms. In response, Yang told the girls to follow him. The three approached the first academic building, near which there was a very large number of zombies. The girls noticed a large number of monsters and asked Ian where they were going. In response, Fan said that the girls were asking too many questions and they just needed to quietly follow him and collect crystals. The girls from around the corner watched Yan and the fact that he was going to go out alone against a huge crowd of zombies. After the guy cut the first monster, a crystal fell out of it and flew towards the girls. Duan picked up the crystal and took a closer look. She told her friend that the crystal looked as if some elements had combined in the human central nervous system and a crystal appeared as a result of the reaction. Maybe he's the reason those people became zombies. Yan Yu asked her friend if she thought that this crystal could make a zombie out of the bottom. In response, the girl said that theoretically such a possibility exists, but she needs to study the composition of this crystal in the laboratory to give a more accurate answer. At this time, Young Fan continued to chop zombies, and the girls obediently followed him, collecting crystals and wondering what he was collecting them for. The girls watched the guy, noticing that he was good at dealing with zombies. At this time, a loud knock sounded behind them. It turned out to be a car that hit a zombie heading to her friends. The car door opened and a handsome guy got out. He turned to Yan Yu and said that they seemed to be connected by fate, because even in such terrible circumstances they were able to meet again. This guy turned out to be Lin Tan, the son of the founder of the corporation Lin Jai, who is madly courting Yan Yu. The man was wearing a white shirt, black trousers, and held a red rose in his teeth. He said that if he was around, these zombies would definitely not touch his friends and urge them to get into his car so that he would take them out of this dark place. The girls looked at the guy with disdain and discontent. Duan thought about how the guy ended up here, while Yan Yu asked Lin Tan about why he stuck to them like a leaf. At this time, Young Fan shouted at the girls to stop standing still and follow him, simultaneously chopping off the heads of monsters. Yan Yu replied that a very annoying guy had arrived, the main major of their university, Lin. Young Fan silently looked at the guy and assessed him with his gaze. Lin began to approach Fan and said that he had excellent fighting skills, and he just needed a bodyguard. 
He encouraged Yang to start the job that was offered to him, because Lin definitely has money. Seeing Jan's ambiguous reaction, he handed him the check. Lin asked the guy why he was looking down on him. The major said that this person has a gap in the amount column and Fan can enter the right number there at any time. And then Lin will cover any expenses of the guy. Fan looked at the guy and thought that this major once again reminded Fan that he needed to save money as soon as possible to buy food and weapons. At that moment, two zombies were advancing on Duan, but Yang took off their heads again in one move. Fan said that apparently there are more zombies and it seems they have attracted the attention of a large group and they need to break through as soon as possible. He urged the girls to run after him as soon as possible. Lin indignantly asked himself why this beggar did not notice him and did not even want to ask Lin about who he was. Because he was the son of the founder of Lin Jai Corporation. He shouted after Yan Yu to wait for him and ran after them. Suddenly, the guy realized that even the zombies did not seem to notice him and he could go out alone against Ten. Yang Fan, Yan Yu and Duan were standing next to each other, and the zombie monsters that surrounded them were running from all sides right at the people. Suddenly, Ian noticed a huge flower ahead, towards which the monsters were running. He did not understand how this was possible and was shocked, because it was a second-level flower that was completely different from other mutated flowers. Fan did not understand how the upgraded flowers appeared so quickly which developed even faster than himself. Duan asked Fan if flowers could develop too. Suddenly, black pollen came out of the flower and the zombies began to absorb it. Yang Fan warned the girls that they should be careful, because this second-level flower can direct the attacks of crowds of zombies. The guy and Yan Yu tried their best to fend off the zombies, while Duan stood motionless and did not know what to do. Fan also did not understand what actions he should take, because there were more and more zombies. Ian told the girls to hide behind him. As these entry-level zombies were moving too slowly and together they would be able to break through. At that moment, another zombie monster ran at Duan with great speed, but Yan Yu managed to repel his attack in time. The girl shouted to her friend to get between her and Yan, since in that case she would be safe, and Yan would deal with those monsters that were running from behind. Fan cast an admiring glance at Yan Yu and thought that it was not for nothing that the girl was the strongest fighter of the Bloody Rose, because she is ready to deal with a crowd of monsters with her bare hands and is not afraid of them. At that moment, Lin drove his expensive car at full speed into the zombies and crushed them. He shouted at Yan Yu not to be afraid and not to worry for her safety, because he was going to protect her. The guy shouted insults at the zombies and began to run them over with a car. Jan noticed this and decided to take advantage of a great opportunity. He shouted to the girls that now was their chance to retreat to the university building and defend the entrance. Lin Tian, who ran out of his car, ran inside the university building and closed the door behind him. The girls ran to him and began to ask him what he was doing and why. Yan began banging on the door and demanding that Lin be urgently let in. With a malicious smile on his face, Lin looked at Yan through the transparent glass door and said that he would open it only after Yan agreed to become his girlfriend. If she did that, he would immediately let her friends in. The girl continued to angrily bang on the door, insulting Lin at the same time, calling him a vile bastard. Tian only grinned in response to the fact that Yan called him vile and said that he thought that the object of his love was in danger and at his own risk came to the university to find her. And in response the girl did not thank the guy in any way. Lin also mentioned that he had been courting the girl for a long time, and she had only disgraced him with her refusals, and now she was entangled with an unknown beggar hinting at Yang Fan. Several zombie monsters were approaching the girls standing at the door to the university building. They were making nasty growling sounds and intended to attack the two girlfriends. However, at the same second, Yang Fan appeared and, as usual, with one movement of the axe, he took off the heads of all the monsters that were in his way. Yan Yu turned to the guy and said that they could not go inside the building. The girl asked him what they should do and what to do. The guy in response shouted to two friends to go to the next dining room. The girls ran in that direction and shouted at Fan to be careful. The guy realized that he couldn't go on like this because the zombies were getting bigger and bigger and they were more aggressive than before. Ian decided that he needed to first deal with that mutated second-level flower that pollinates zombies and summons them, making his way to the flower through the crowd of monsters, taking off the heads of everyone who met on Fan's way. The guy thought about why this flower mutated so quickly. Finally reaching the flower, the guy swung the axe and hit the flower with all his might. But to Jan's surprise, he turned out to be very hard, so one blow was not enough. The guy realized with horror that being at the current level, he could only pierce the outer layer of the plant. He also remembered that in his previous life, second-level mutant flowers appeared only a week after the end of the world. Yang Fan wondered if his rebirth had triggered the butterfly effect. At this time, the flower was still spraying seeds around. TSV Talk started forcing zombies to attack Yang Fan and a bunch of monsters ran towards him. The guy thought that this was a good combination of circumstances. 
since now the girls will be able to safely find the entrance to the university and hide. However, despite all of Ian's agility and strength, it was hard for him to handle so many zombies alone. One monster almost grabbed Fan when suddenly a knife flew into his head. The guy turned around and saw Yan Yu and Duan behind him. The guy looked at them in surprise and asked why they had returned. Duan was holding a 5-liter bottle of some kind of liquid in her hands. In response to Fan's question, Yan replied that the guy had previously said that he did not need any burdens, and although he and his girlfriend did not have much strength, they could help the guy. Hearing this, Yang was surprised and realized that he was really teaming up with those who were his enemies in a previous life. Looking at Yan's hand, the guy saw cuts on it and asked her if she was injured. In response, Yan said that she had just noticed a zombie grabbing her, but she was fine and they had to deal with the monsters first. Duan said that she had a bottle of vegetable oil in her hands and they could spill it and set it on fire. Jan smiled and praised the girl for such a great idea. Yan ran to the monsters and shouted to Duan and Yang that she would cover them. In response, the guys asked her to be careful, because zombies are attacking from all sides. The guy began to abundantly water the mutant flower with vegetable oil from a bottle. Jan took a lighter out of his pocket, lit it and threw it at the flower. The plant instantly burst into flames with a huge bonfire. The guy sighed with relief and said that they were lucky that the flower was only of the second level, because if it had mutated to the third, they would not have been able to cope with it with ordinary fire. Suddenly, Pereno noticed a red pollen floating in the air. In a panic, he shouted at the girls to hold their breath, as this pollen is capable of paralyzing and plunging into a deep sleep, because even zombies of the first level pass out. He told the girls that they had to leave and all three ran away. A few minutes later, Lin appeared on the square in front of the entrance to the university. He walked among the sleeping zombies in search of Yan Yu and called her. Looking around him, he decided that Yang Fan, Yan Yu and Duan had killed all these zombies. The guy walked up to the mutated flower and tried to figure out what it was. Not far from the plant itself, a small red bud lay on the ground. Lin noticed it and bent down to take it. At that moment, a tentacle of a flower abruptly grew out of the ground and stuck into Lin. He was horrified to discover that he had been impaled on some strange flower. That was the last thing he thought about before he passed out. At this time, the three main characters were running away from the zombies. At one point, Yan Yu stopped to catch her breath and told Fan that she couldn't run anymore because she was dizzy. The guy looked at the girl's hand. Yan's wrist turned red and then turned blue. Fan said that the girl was infected by zombies. The girl said with horror that she did not want to become one of them and then it was better for him to kill her right away before she turned into one. At that moment, young Fan abruptly picked up the girl and threw her on his back. He told her not to worry, as she still has every chance of recovery. But if she really becomes a zombie, then the guy will not do condescension. Walking along the road, the guy thought that Yan Yu's situation was really serious. Fan also noticed that he has not even upgraded to the first level yet, so his ring can only cleanse the body that was bitten by a level 0 zombie. Based on this, Yang decided that they needed to return to the women's shower room and there the guy could rise to the level, after which he would heal Yan Yu. The guy was running away from a crowd of zombies, still carrying the girl. Duan Mu was running after him. She barely managed to catch up with Yang, so Fan asked her to hurry up, because her friend urgently needed help. A few minutes later, the three of them were back in the shower room. Yan Yu was very dizzy, but she did not answer Fan's question about her well-being. Duan Mu was already crying for her friend, but Yang told her to stop crying and give him all the crystals she had collected. The girl was surprised by such a request, but obediently handed the crystals to Jan. Only after that did the girls notice that someone else in a grey robe was standing in the room. They didn't understand who it was and why there was someone else in the shower besides them. The guy shouted the phrase, start trading, and after that he literally disappeared, as if by magic. The girls did not understand where Jan had disappeared and were a little worried, but they just waited. And you had already begun to think that Fan would not cure the girl and she would just become a zombie. At this time, Yang was indignant at the trade that the end of the world had just begun and a bottle of mineral water was already worth as many as four grey crystals, and this was also taking into account the fact that Fan's discount was due to the ring. He also added that he was not dealing with merchants, but with real moneylenders. The guy was still happy with his discount at the expense of the ring and decided to buy one bottle of water for four crystals and a medicine for developing to the first level for 40 crystals. Thus, the guy saved as much as 60 crystals. As soon as the merchant handed him the medicine, Yang immediately drank it. In his previous life, he missed the time to develop in the early stages of the end of the world and ended up in Xia Wao's hands. Because of this, he was not even able to use the power of the ring to its fullest, and as a result, he had to watch people close to him die. This time, Jan was serious and decided that no one would even dare to touch a hair on the head of his loved ones and loved ones. 
At this time, the medicine took effect and its level increased from zero to the first. Yang decided that he could not fully trust Yan Yu and Duanmu yet, so he would keep the method of cleansing the body with the ring a secret from them. In order for him to do this, he transferred the power of his ring into a bottle of water. Suddenly, Yang Fan appeared in the women's shower room again. He saw that Yan Bi was lying unconscious on the bench, and Duanmu was bending over her and did not know what to do. The girl was surprised that Yan Fan had appeared again, but now she didn't want to think about what had happened. She screamed in panic and asked Jan to help her friend faster, because she had passed out. Looking at the girl, the guy realized that things were very bad and she would soon turn, so there was little time left. Duan watched as the guy took water from a bottle into his mouth and did not understand what to do or how to help her friend. The guy thought that Yan Yu was in a coma and his teeth were tightly closed. Because of this, even if you pour out a lot of cleansing water, it is unlikely that there will be a result. Therefore, the guy bent down to the girl's face and decided to pour water into her mouth. Duan, who was watching the scene, covered her mouth with her hand in shock and stood in a daze. Suddenly Yan Yu, she stirred, raised her hand and pushed the guy away from her. She abruptly sat down on the bench and yelled at Yang Fan for choosing to save her that way. In response, the guy said that the girl had passed out and could not take the medicine herself, so he had to resort to this method. Jan handed the bottle to the girl and told her to finish the rest. Duan Mu immediately pounced on her friend and hugged her tightly. The girl was very glad that her friend finally woke up and said that she was very scared for her. She also added that if Yang Fan hadn't helped in time, Yan Yu would have been a zombie long ago. The girl looked at Jan and said she thought he had disappeared and asked him why he had returned. Duan Mu also suggested that the guy's disappearance could be related to that man in the grey hoodie, because the guy suddenly disappeared when he stood in front of him, and then also suddenly appeared in the same place. The guy noted the girl's intelligence and quick wit and praised her for it. Yang Fan said that the man in the cloak is a merchant who appeared after the end of the world. All you need to do is just approach him with the crystals and you can start trading. And you said that trading sounds mysterious. She assumed that the guy had bought a bottle of water from a merchant for crystals and asked him how much he had spent. The girl told Ian to think that she had borrowed from him and would pay back the amount as soon as she had filled a sufficient number of zombies. In response, the guy said that it was not worth doing this and told the girls to follow him because they had already lost a lot of time. Duan Mu was outraged that her friend had not yet recovered, and Yang was already demanding that they move somewhere, but she followed him anyway because she and Yan had no choice. Outside, Yang Fan said that they should take advantage of the fact that the zombies had passed out and take out the crystals from them. At that moment, Lin was advancing on them, but he had already become a zombie. Yang and the girls couldn't understand why this happened. The three heroes were standing at the entrance to the main building of the university when suddenly a tentacle of one of the plants began to move towards Yan Yu at high speed from behind. However, Yang quickly pushed the girl away and the attack passed by. Fan said that the attack radius of the plant is limited, so you need to keep a safe distance and then the plant will not reach them. Suddenly, Yang and Yan looked back and saw how the plant had bound Duan and held her tightly with its tentacles. The girl made excuses that the flower turned out to be too fast and she did not have time to react. This plant turned out to be the spores of a first-level mutant flower. Fan ran to Duan and told her not to move. He also added that these are the spores of that second-level flower and now they will take revenge. The guy ran to the girl with an axe intending to cut the vines. With one sharp movement of his hand, Fan was able to chop the plant and the girl fell to the ground. The guy asked the girl if she would be able to walk and told her to step aside and hide, because they have enough problems and he would not want the plant to touch the girl again. Duan carefully got up from the ground and apologized to the guy for her slowness. At this time, the second level plant spewed some kind of purple ball of smoke towards the people. Fan immediately covered his mouth with his palm and told the girls not to breathe, because it was poison. Because of this toxic smoke, the guy couldn't open his eyes to see the attacks of the plant spores and repel them. He did not see how another vine was coming at him, which was about to pierce him. The girl warned Jan about the danger, but he couldn't do anything. However, the ring on Ian's hand lit up and with the help of its energy lifted the guy into the air, thereby protecting him from attack and at the same time cleansed the guy's body of poison. Ian was relieved to think that he was lucky to have a ring with such properties, otherwise he would definitely have been defeated today. Immediately opening his eyes, Fan axed the spore that was trying to attack him. Falling to the ground, two crystals fell out of the vine. The guy was surprised by this turn, because he did not think that they were in the plant. Fan bent down and picked up the crystals. They looked like white pearls. Yan Yu approached Fan and asked him about what he was holding in his hands. Yang replied that these were white crystals that fell out of that second level flower and apparently he did not have time to absorb them. Yan asked Fan if mutants could eat their own kind. Yang Fan said that mutant plants use the absorption of human bodies and the bodies of other mutants in order to continuously develop and increase their powers. In this world of the apocalypse, the weak die and the strong are eaten. 
Suddenly, another red bud of the plant erupted from the ground. Duan noticed this and warned Yang and Yu about it. Jan bent down to the ground and examined the bud and said that it was no longer the spores of that plant. The bud that sprouted in front of them took all the best from that mutant flower. Yanbi asked Fan what he was talking about. But the guy did not reveal all the secrets and said only that the girl would soon find out everything herself. Fan called the girls to him and said that they needed to go to the shower again. Yan immediately realized that this was necessary in order to trade. In response to this suggestion, Fan called her smart. Once again in the women's bathroom, the guy thought that even if he calculated that one white crystal is equal to a thousand gray ones and he buys that strong hammer, then he will have nothing left. The guy approached the merchant and announced the start of trading. As a result, the guy took a hammer for himself and two first-level development potions and a pistol for the girls. That way, at least they won't have to waste a lot of fans' time, since they don't know how to defend themselves. The guy will spend exactly 1,000 gray crystals and he has 116 crystals left. Now they will be able to fight monsters normally. After the end of the trade, Fan reappeared in the shower. He gave the girls each a development potion and ordered them to drink, as well as a pistol, so that they too would be a combat unit. Yan was surprised that the guy gave them the gun and asked Fan if he needed a gun. In response, the guy showed the girl his hammer and smiled contentedly. The girl asked the guy what kind of hammer it was. In response, the guy said that now he has his magic ring in the craftsman's profession. And in this life Zio Ao should not die too quickly because Fan wants to finish him off with his own hands. After that, there was a bright flash of energy coming from Fan. Yan noted that the guy didn't seem to have changed at all. In response, Jan said that the most important thing could not be seen with his eyes and he would show her what he was capable of now. Yang Fan thought that now that he had mastered the craftsman profession, in this lifetime he would be able to create the strongest fully armed group and smear the base of the heavenly disc. The guy declared the transformation to be an artisan and the axe in his hands turned into a sword. The girls watching this were shocked. Fan said that the craftsman has the ability to transform materials into any weapon. After that, the guy did some manipulations with the sword again, saying that he wanted to add something against zombies. A bright blue flash appeared again, after which the guy proudly announced that this sword now has the ability to paralyze enemies. The girls looked at Fan with admiration and said that it all looks very cool. It was obvious from the guy that he was pleased with himself. After that, Duan walked up to Fan and held out her scalpel, asking if there was anything she could do with it. The guy said that he could add material and make two scalpels for the girls. Taking a shower head and a scalpel, the guy began to use his craftsman powers. As a result, he got two large knives. He gave them to the girls and offered to try them out in action. Duan said that the guy forged metal with his bare hands and it's unscientific. After that, Yan Yu handed her friend the test tubes and told her to drink. The girl asked Fan if this potion would help them level up and give them new abilities. In response, the guy said that this potion would only give them the first level and develop the hidden capabilities of their body. Duan looked at the potion and thought that she should first analyze its composition in the laboratory. However, then she thought that she could later buy the same and do what she had planned. After drinking the potion, the girls said they felt unusual, as if their whole body was filled with power. Yan even said she was ready to kill a hundred of these monsters. The guy called the girls to go with him and informed them that their next target was the women's dormitory where his sister Yang Jingxiu was hiding. On the street, the guy found some kind of car left in the woods. Fan threw the lifeless body out of the driver's seat and ordered the girls to get into the car. The guy pressed the gas pedal to the floor and headed for his sister's dorm. Arriving at the first women's dormitory, the guy driving the car knocked down a crowd of zombies that were in his way. The guy decided to block the entrance with a car as a huge crowd of zombies chased them. The girls ran up the stairs to the women's dormitory and asked Fan about which room his sister lived in. Jan replied that the room number was 501. Approaching the room, the three found that the door was open, lifeless bodies were lying on the floor and a pool of blood was visible. The girls covered their mouths with their hands in shock. Upon entering the room, Fan called his sister by name, but she did not respond. He saw a broken window in her room. Yan Yu said that there were many signs of a struggle in this place and most likely his sister had already become a zombie. But before the girl could finish, Fan ordered her to be silent, as he did not want to believe in what was happening. Duan called young Fan and said she had found the phone. She brought it to the guy and he immediately identified it as his younger sister's phone. Looking at the screen, he found that it said that the girl's sports bracelet had disconnected from the phone 15 minutes ago. Based on this, it could be assumed that the girl had left the room a quarter of an hour ago, which means she could not have run far. Fan ordered the girls to split up and look for his sister. At that time, a terrible thing was happening in the recreation room on the seventh floor. Four guys entered the women's dormitory and tied the girls to chairs. Yang Jinxiu was among them. Apparently, the guys were harassing the girls and it was clear what they were going to do with them. 
One of the men took Yang Fan's younger sister by the chin and said that he was very glad that the end of the world had come. Otherwise such a juicy baby would not have fallen into his hands. As he spoke, he licked his lips and bared his teeth. The girl was very scared and started screaming for the guys to let her go. Otherwise they would be dealing with the girl's brother. The man came even closer and said that the brother would not save the girl and he would help her better, hinting at bad things at the same time. Jinxiu screamed for help. In response, the man said that the girl screams very loudly and it turns him on, so he asked her to scream some more. The girl began to cry and thought about how she regretted opening the door to these good-natured bastards and not obeying her brother. Jinxiu was already beginning to think that terrible things would start happening to her now, when suddenly Yang Fin broke into the room and shouted at the man to take his hands off his sister. The girl was delighted to see her brother, but the man looked at Finn and it was clear from his expression that he did not take the opponent seriously. Noticing this, Dodger became even more furious and again demanded that the man remove his dirty hands from his sister, calling him a bastard. After that, he slashed at the bandit's stomach with his sword. At that moment, three more guys headed towards Finn. They called the guy a freak and said he ran over their boss. They hinted that Finn would be in trouble right now. One of the men even told Finn that he was already dead. In response, Finn shouted at his sister not to be afraid of anything, because none of the men who offended her today would leave this room. After that, the guy swung his sword again and attacked one of the bandits. Another man took out a knife and calling Finn mad, prepared to stab him. But at that moment, the knife flew right into the forehead of this scoundrel and he fell to the floor. Finn looked behind him and saw Yan Yu there, who threw a knife at the attacker. The two remaining men, seeing the corpses of their friends, were scared and began to beg for mercy from Fan. They asked him not to kill them and swore that it would not happen again. Saying these words, the guys were on their knees and bowed at Fan's feet. Yan Yu realized with horror that the guy she threw the knife at had died, and she hadn't even had time to think. Fan looked at the girl with a smile and reassured her that there was nothing to be ashamed of, because now the end of the world had come and if she had not killed that bandit, he would have killed her. Fan untied his sister's hands and she happily threw herself on her brother's neck. She started crying and talking about how scared she was. Fan began to calm her down and apologized for being late. The other girls in the room came up to Fan and said that in order to thank him for saving them, they would go with him because now their safety depends on Fan. In response, Chan abruptly said that he did not need it because the end of the world had come and he did not need a burden. Fan pointed at the two unconscious girls who were lying in the room and said that if those who approached him did not become stronger, they would most likely repeat their fate. At this time, Duan entered the room. She was taken aback by what she saw and turned to Yang Fan with a question about what happened here and whether he had found his sister. Jan replied that he had found it and told the girls to follow him. The girls who stayed in the room watched the guy leave in the company of Yan Yu, Duan and his younger sister and decided that Fan refused them because they were worse than the two beauties who walked next to him. They also said that most likely these girls are a burden themselves. Once on the second floor of the women's dormitory, the four went out onto the balcony. Yang Fan looked down at the street and said that there are a lot of zombies below and to begin with, he would go down and deal with them, and only then the girls would join him. The guy jumped right off the balcony of the second floor to the ground, seriously determined to collect a bunch of crystal. He immediately hit one of the monsters in the face and start dissecting the rest of the zombies. Yang Jinxiu shouted from the balcony, supporting her brother. A few minutes later, Yang Fan shouted to the girls that the zombies were finished and they could go down. The younger sister told the guy that he was cool and was surprised by his abilities. The four of them were in the car. Yan Yu was driving. Yang Fan was in the passenger seat next to her, and Yang Jinxiu and Duan Mu were in the back. At one point, Fan abruptly ordered Yan to stop in order to go to a supermarket nearby. Jinxiu was surprised by her brother's order, because it was obvious that the store was full of zombies. But immediately after that, the girl felt a pain in her stomach caused by hunger and agreed with her brother's decision. There was indeed a huge crowd of zombies at the entrance to the supermarket. Duan said they should definitely stock up on groceries and food. She also added that usually in such large stores like this there are back doors in the alleys and they should go through them. Yan Yu agreed with her friend, smiled and told all the passengers to sit comfortably, because now they will make their way to the back door of the store through the crowd of zombies. Arriving at the entrance, Yang Fan got out of the car and said that he would deal with the zombie, who was once a store guard, and the girls should follow him. With a single movement of his hand, Yang Fan chopped up the monster, after which all four of them entered the store. They ended up in a clothing store. Yan Yu noticed that there were no zombies in the store at all and all the things were intact, which means that they can rest here and collect things. At this time, Jinxiu was jumping for joy, looking at the counter with her favorite chips and cola, which made it seem to her that she had returned to normal life. However, Du intensed and thought about it, because there should be a crowd of employees and customers in the supermarket, but they did not see anyone. Then the girl wondered where all the zombies were. The girl also looked at the zombies standing outside. 
who were trying to get inside the store through the glass door, and noticed that they looked as if they were attracted by some kind of thing located in the supermarket building. Suddenly, Yang Fan's younger sister called her brother and said that she had found blood between the food racks. When Yang Fan came to the place pointed out by his sister, he found a terrible and huge pool of blood and decided that this was exactly what attracted those zombies that were outside. Duan went to the puddle, dipped her finger into it, examined the liquid and warned that the puddle was really made of human blood and everyone should be on guard. At this moment, the crowd of zombies breaking down outside was rapidly increasing and they were about to break through the glass and enter inside. Sheng Fan noticed this and stood at the door. He ordered the girls to move away and collect as much food as possible and hide in a safe place. While collecting supplies, Yan Yu noticed that apparently someone would throw a piece of meat on purpose to attract zombies. The guy looked at his sister, who had filled a backpack full of food and realized that hiding in the store was a good way to protect himself, because there was a lot of food in this place and zombies would not enter here. He and Jinx Yu found two backpacks and both were filled with food. Suddenly, Jan heard a sound. At that time, on the second floor of the supermarket, a man with glasses was sitting behind a screen showing a picture from surveillance cameras. He turned to the girl next to him and asked her if the man in the store was her ex-boyfriend Yang Fan. A girl dressed in a rabbit costume was holding out a lighter to light a cigar in the man's mouth. She hurriedly began to say that Yang Fan was not her ex and now in her heart there was only a man sitting next to her and everything that had happened before did not count. The man in the chair turned out to be Wang Ji Long. The nickname of the supermarket's security service Everything You Need began. However, the girl noticed that Yang Fan was still a strange person, because even in the morning he had said that the end of the world was the world of the strongest. The man grabbed the girl by the chin and pulled her towards him. He asked her if she was sure that Yang Fan had said exactly that and if she was deceiving him. In response, the girl told Moon that she could not deceive a man in any way and in the end moaned in pain, because Wang Ji squeezed her jaw very tightly. The girl obediently gave her man's name. During this, the girl glanced at the monitor screen of the surveillance camera and looked at Yang Fan and Yan Yu standing there. She got angry at her ex-boyfriend, called him a bastard because he was already with a new girl, and he left her at the hotel and now she found herself in the clutches of a pervert Wang Ji Long. At that moment, the girl noticed that the gun that Yan Yu was holding in her hands began to glow. She told the moon about it. He also noticed this and thought about it. At this time, on the first floor of the supermarket, Yang Fan, with a sword in his hands, approached a piece of meat lying on the floor of the store. He thought about the fact that his ring allows not only to interact with merchants, but also to store things. Duan Mu said that we need to figure out a way to collect more supplies. Otherwise these two backpacks full of food won't even be enough for one Jinx Yu. At this time, in the office of the head of the security department, Yang Fan's ex-girlfriend turned to Moon and said that all three girls next to her ex were very beautiful. In response, Wang Ji told his subordinates that they should go downstairs and pick up these girls and bring them to the office to have fun with them one last time. Lu's subordinates picked up the bats and began to stretch their arms. One of them said that this guy attacked them in the morning and as a result they were almost eaten by zombies, so now they will return the favor. After that, the entire team headed by Wang Ji headed out of the office. At this time, Yang Fan noticed the surveillance camera and told the girls to rest in a safe place for now and he would go and get things. Yang Fan approached Yan Yu and said that someone was watching them from the cameras, so they should move separately. The girl was surprised that there was someone else in the store. After that, Fan came even closer to Yan and whispered in her ear a further plan of action. A few minutes later, Yang Fan walked between the food racks and thought that during the apocalypse, one bottle of drinking water costs four gray crystals, and a bottle of cola can be sold for 20 such crystals. So the guy should use his ring to stock up on as much currency as possible in such a format as food. At the moment, the ring can store a space of 10 squares, but the guy decided that he needed to try to increase this number and then he could stock even more goods. At that moment, Yang Fan picked up a bottle of water from the floor and threw it with all his might at one of the surveillance cameras. After that, he began to use his power of the ring in order to collect as much food as possible into it. At this time, someone shouted behind his back that this jerk named Yang Fan dared to touch his things. While saying this, the man threw a knife at the guy's back, but he managed to dodge in time and the weapon crashed into an already empty rack in front of him. Yang Fan realized that they had been ambushed. Turning around, the guy saw a crowd of guards advancing on him. He recognized the man who was in charge and realized that it was Wang Ji Lung. Yang Fan will remember that in the last world, it was this man who tormented him during the beginning of the end of the world. He enslaved the soul of the guy, which led to the fact that he lost heart and practically turned into a helpless invalid. At this time, Lung confirmed that this was his name and he believes that Yang Fan is impudent to the point of indecency since he dared to mess around on his territory. One of the attacking guards shouted that in his opinion Fan would be better off without legs and ordered them to be cut off. 
three of Moon's subordinates ran towards Yang Fan with bats in their hands. However, the guy simultaneously hit two of them in the jaw with both hands, calling them weaklings. Long and the remaining subordinate were shocked and did not understand where Fan got so much power from. Lan Ji Lung told Fan not to be a fool, because his guys had grabbed the girls who were with him and if Fan touched Moon, then the girls would not be well. But before he could finish speaking, he heard a crash behind him. Turning around, he saw the body of one of his subordinates lying on the floor. Yan Yu stood next to him and held the second guard by the hair. She turned to Yang Fan and said that he was right when he talked about these henchmen, because they really suddenly attacked the girls after Yang left, but Yu quickly dealt with them. Seeing this, Yi Lung realized that he and his subordinates were screwed and was seriously scared. He began to fear for his life and cowardly crouched at Yang Fan's feet. He bent down and begged Fan not to kill them. Long began to justify himself by saying that someone named Zhao Yun Rong had forced him to do all this. At this time, Lung grabbed a bat lying nearby. He thought that Yang Fan was a bastard for daring to set such a trap for him and was going to get even with him. Lung wanted to use Fan's distraction and confusion to strike stealthily. He grabbed a bat and shouted at Fan that he would bludgeon him to death, also calling him a stinking bastard. But fortunately, Yang Fan was quite dexterous and prudent, so he quickly repelled Long's attack. He used his sword to snatch the bat out of the opponent's hands, turned it into a sharp blade and it pierced Wang Ji's arm. In a panic and fear of pain, Lung fell to the ground and began to cry and scream. He asked Yang Fan what kind of black magic he was using and ordered Yang Fan to let him go quickly, otherwise Lung would kill him. Luna's subordinates, who were watching all this, were scared and ran away from the ambush site in fear. One of them even began to say that he was not guilty of anything and begged Fan to spare him. Yan Yu, who watched what Yang Fan did, admired his dexterity and thoughtfulness because she did not even imagine that this could be done. After that, Fan stood over Moon and asked him if he was really going to kill Jan. In response, Lung began to cry and beg Fan to spare him. He began to repeat again that it was the scoundrel Zhao Yun Rong who provoked him. He started saying that every crime has a criminal, and every debt has a debtor. Lung began to beg Fan to let him go again. Fan used his craftsman's power to collect metal from the baton that pierced Moon's arm and said he would forgive him. However, after that, he created a sharp metal blade again and this time it pierced Lung's throat, killing him. He wished the Moon to go to hell, turned around and left with a smile at the Lyceum. Yan Yu, who was watching all this, realized that just like Yang Fan, she could use her abilities anytime and at any time. The other subordinates of the moon fell to the floor and began to bow at Yang Fan's feet. They said they would never dare to do anything like that again. They also called Fan a great man and asked to be spared. Yan Yu turned to Yang Fan and asked him not to kill these people, since their attack did not take place, even though they were very nasty people. Yang Fan ordered the men to get out and they quickly ran away from the guy's eyes. However, Fan said that there was another problem and that was Zhao Yun Rong. At that moment, Yang Fan's ex-girlfriend was standing on the stairs and eavesdropping on the conversation. After that, the girl returned to the office with the monitors and angrily opened the door and went inside. She tried her best to make Yang Fan a scapegoat, but she couldn't do it. Then the girl used the computer to open the front door to the store and let all the zombies in. She was sure that this time he would definitely not be able to survive. At the same moment, a huge crowd of angry and hungry zombies rushed into the store. Fan saw it and immediately realized that his ex-girlfriend Yun Rong had done it. Fan ordered Yan Yu to hurry upstairs and find the switch from the induction door and close it. Yan obeyed him and asked the guy to be careful. At this time, his younger sister and Duan ran out to meet Fan. They were in a panic and shouted to Jan to help them, as the doors to the store had opened and there were a lot of zombies. Fan ordered Duan Mu to guard King Siu, and he ran to deal with the zombies. The girls wished Fan good luck. Duan Mu pulled out a knife, stood in front of Yang Fan's younger sister and told her not to be afraid of anything, because Duan would protect her. At this time, Yan Yu got up and found an office with a sign that read Dispatch Room. The girl reached for the handle to open the door, as she was sure that the door switch should be in this room. However, at this time, Yun Rong attacked the girl with a metal bat in her hands. She wanted to attack Yan Yu, but missed, as the girl turned out to be smarter and faster, and therefore was able to dodge in time. Yang Fan's ex-girlfriend called Yan Yu a scoundrel and wished her dead. Yan grabbed Yun Rong by the throat and said she knew there was an ambush in the office. The girl also noticed that the evolutionary drugs had greatly improved her agility. And that's why she was able to react so quickly to the enemy's attack and grab Yun. The girl tied up Rong and threw it on the floor of the office. Yun hurled insults at Yan Yu and asked her to let the girl go. In response, Yan ordered Rong to shut her filthy mouth and said she would deal with her soon. At that time, Yan was surfing the computer and looking for a way to close the door. Downstairs, the girls panicked as the doors still wouldn't close, but Yang Fan calmed them down with his presence and continued to cut monsters. At that moment, Yan Yu came up to Yang Fan. She led Rong next to her and asked the guy what she should do with her. 
At this time, Rong immediately screamed at Fan to save her from this evil woman. In response, Yan Yu asked the girl about what happened to her head and why she opened the doors, to kill them or for Yang Fan to save her. The girl replied that she just wanted to help them deal with Wanji Long's gang as they had killed supermarket workers and were going to kill Fan and the girls. Suddenly, Yang Fan seemed to be kinder, smiled and touched Rong's face. He asked her if she really wanted to help them, to which the girl replied positively and added that she loved him the most. She came even closer to the guy and pressed herself against his chest. Fan said that in that case, the girl should go to hell and help him kill Wang Ji Long again. After these words, Fan pushed the girl out the door of the store, right into the hands of thousands of zombies and the doors to the store closed. The monster started biting the girls and cutting them into pieces. She screamed and asked for help, but it was useless. The girl pressed herself against the glass door and shouted to Fan that when she became a spirit, she would never leave him alone. At this time, young Fan's younger sister called Rong Trash for daring to threaten her brother, as well as attack her and Yan and Duanmu. While collecting crystals from the corpses of zombies that had made their way into the supermarket, Yan Yu talked to Fan. She said that throwing Rong to the monsters was a little cruel, but she deserved it. The girl asked the guy if Rong was his harmful ex-girlfriend, to which Fan replied positively. Yan Yu told everyone that there was a staff room on the second floor of the supermarket where they could take a shower. She also added that they could stay there overnight and tidy themselves up. Fan agreed with Yu. After entering the staff room, Yan Yu, her friend Duan, and younger sister Fanya were taking a shower. They were very happy about such a simple thing. Hink Siu said that the day really turned out to be very stressful. In response, Yan Yu advised the girl to go to bed early, because who knows, maybe tomorrow it will be even more difficult for them. Also, thanks to the medicine, Duan Mu no longer needed to wear glasses, because her eyesight was perfect. The girl was very happy about this fact. While the girls were washing in the shower, Yang Fan, on the ground floor, continued to collect food in his room. The guy was able to collect everything that was in the store. Early the next morning, three guys sneaked into the store through the back door. They wanted to collect food, but what was their surprise when they entered the store and found empty shelves on the shelves? They looked at the shelves in the shops and couldn't figure out where all the food had gone. One of them fell to the floor and said that they had spent so much effort to come to this place, but there was nothing here. Another man said that it looked very strange, since the store was clean, like in a hospital. The man noticed the stairs to the second floor and called his friends to follow him to climb higher. Going up the stairs, one of the friends said that it seemed to him that the store was somehow suspiciously quiet and he was afraid that a zombie had jumped out now. After that, one of the men turned to the second one named C. Nan and asked him to go ahead. Upon opening the door, the guy immediately heard an order that he should not move and a sword blade was put to his face. The guy immediately started begging not to kill him because they are not zombies. The other guys standing behind C. Nan were surprised by Yang Fan's quick reaction and realized that he had cleared all the shelves of groceries in the store. At this time, Yan Yu came out of another office and the guys noticed her. She asked Yang Fan about who they were. At this time, Zai Nan began to beg Yan Yu to ask Fan not to kill him, because they had only come for food and canned cat food. The other two guys confirmed this and asked Fan to put the weapon away. After that, Fan put away his weapon and told the guys to leave the place, because there was no food in it. But then Zai Nan asked about what was in Yan Yu's backpack and pointed at her with his finger. The other two guys immediately changed their plaintive faces to angry grins and began to approach the girl with the words that such a large backpack would last them for how many days. At that moment, a knife flew between the guys and crashed into the wall behind them. The men were scared and looked at the knife. Yan Yu threw it. She turned to the men and said that they should get out of this place for what they had allowed themselves, otherwise she would kill them. One of the men was very scared and realized that if the knife had flown another millimeter to the left, he would have been left without a head. The second man grabbed his friend's hand and turned to Yan Yu. He called her a beauty and asked her not to attack them. He claimed that there was a misunderstanding and his friend just had problems with his head, but they were already leaving. The second man turned to another man named Kang and asked him if they would just leave like that because this girl almost killed him. In response, the man told his friend not to worry, because now they can't overcome openly, but later they will still find a way to steal their backpack. 